In today's video, what I wanted to share with you is my answer to a question that we covered within the group sleep coaching session for the Sleep Skills for Life program that I facilitate and run uh, with my uh, business. And this question comes up quite a bit with, within my work. So the question was about what to do when you keep tossing and turning in bed and it almost feels like that it's, you're not able to overcome it. So your body almost wants to move when you're not able to sleep for a period of time. And this can come up in two different ways. Either your inability to be able to fall asleep is what then creates this, or in the middle of the night, you're not able to fall back to sleep. And then again, this tossing and turning comes into the picture. So before we go into my answer and I'll share the actual recording from the live session, um, I wanted to, first of all, thank you for those of you who are returning to my channel, um, like videos, come and watch more videos, learn from any of those videos that I shared over the years. And those of you who are new to my channel, let me quickly introduce myself. So my name is Beatrix Schmidt. I'm a sleep coach, a professional speaker, and the creator of the Sleep Skills for Life program. And I have also struggled with insomnia, so I don't just come from the practitioner's perspective when I share these videos. I also come from knowing how frustrating it can be to even find relevant advice to whatever sleep problems you struggle with. And the first thing I always say to uh, those of you who are new to my channel, and maybe this is the first video you watched, is it's really important to really understand the scale of your sleep problems. So don't jump into conclusions, but really either have an assessment or really look at your sleep problems in a more practical way rather than just trying to look for quick fixes and quick things. Sleep problems don't change quickly. They change over time when you put the time and the effort into creating a practical plan rather than just trying a bunch of things. So now that we covered that, one more thing to ask you is if you're interested in this topic of insomnia, sleep problems and generally sleep improvements, then hit the subscribe button below. Click on the like button if you liked the video once you watched it and come and join us in the comments. Ask me a question or let me know how this video perhaps resonated with you. So the interesting thing with tossing and turning in the middle of the night when you're woken up by whatever you're woken up by is that the more you toss and turn, the less relaxed you tend to become. Now, it doesn't mean you can't fall asleep again. So in your case, you do eventually manage to fall back to sleep. But there is this tossing and turning, which actually often results in more waking. So instead of being able to, let's say, fall asleep in five minutes again, because the tossing and turning kind of almost makes you wake up a bit, it then means that maybe you're only able to fall asleep in 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So, and this is really, and how you phrase the question is really good because it's like your body really wants to move but you know you don't really, or you shouldn't be moving because the ultimate thing is relaxing. So what I see with this, and again for you, you've already seen improvement, so that's really good. Sometimes the impatience comes back in because now you know you are improving and you're expecting that falling asleep in the middle of the night to happen quicker. That's a bit of the emotional tension. Then we've got the actual physical tension. So every time we move and we toss, whichever way you toss, it's a release of tension. So if you think about it this way, let's say you've woken up and you are on your left-hand side, just give you an example. So you're on your left-hand side, you, you know that you're awoke, woken up, you'll become aware of it, you are awake. And sometimes where it starts is this little bit of disappointment that, oh, I'm awake again, or here we go again, or any of those little bits of mindsets. As soon as that mindset kicks in, you're no longer relaxed in that moment in time. And then what I find with clients is from that pressure goes up. 
And when the pressure reaches a certain point, that is when you end up turning over to the other side because it becomes almost, and like you sort of explained, a bit unbearable and your body just wants to move. And naturally, when we move, it's often a release of some sort of attention or a release. It's just what it is. Then so you turn over to the right-hand side. Then on the right-hand side, maybe you spend a few minutes. And again, you see that increase of tension over a period of few minutes or whatever that is. And again, the reason you end up turning is because the tension goes high enough for your body to want to get out of it. So again, the release of tension means that you maybe go back to your other side again. So the left-hand side. What I would suggest with that is instead of turning completely to the other side, slow it down. And this has been very effective with clients. So instead of saying, right, I'm on my left-hand side and the only way for me to get out of this tension is to turn all the way to the right-hand side. What I normally say to clients is start with Let's say figuring out where the tension is. You will always have a place in the body where the tension is. So where do you feel that tension? Is it maybe that your arm starts to go a bit numb, which is why you want to turn? Or maybe you actually feel it in your chest area. Like you feel like you're almost a bit stuck. That's sometimes what the feeling is, is I feel so stuck that I have to move out of it. So sometimes it's in the chest area. I've had different clients in different places that they feel this. What I want you to do first is I want you to take available hand. So if you're on your right hand side, that it's probably going to be your left hand. If you're on your left hand side, it's probably going to be on your right hand. Or if you're lying on your back, then whichever hand. If you're lying on your tummy, that's a bit more challenging, but I'm not sure which one it is. So Take whichever hand is available and place the hand wherever the tension shows up and just leave it there. Or if the tension is becoming higher, then brush. So it's literally just a single brush like that. It's a soothing kind of uh, sort of touch. It's not this. It's, a, it's one long smooth. And then see what the response is. It's not about that's gonna fix everything, but what I want you to notice is when you place the hand or brush the hand, does the intensity come down a little bit? Most of the time it does because it's a natural soothing type action. If you see that it's, it's, it's changed by 5%, let's say, then that soothing has been appropriate for the problem. Now, I'm not saying that's gonna fix everything. Often what happens is that tension goes up again. When it goes up again, and let's say you soothe again, do the same thing, so rinse and repeat, you're still staying on the same side. So you haven't moved completely yet. You're just using your available hand to soothe wherever the tension area is. Now, what usually tend to happen is it comes down, it goes back up, but it doesn't go back up to as high as it was before. So that's one version. Another version, if the intensity goes high still, instead of turning all the way to the other side, and this, and often we do it in a way that it's like, we're grumpy about it. Like, I really have to move now. And we become like almost a little child and we become like, oh, here we go, I have to turn. And I now have to be make sure that I don't wake up my partner or my other half. So there's now more pressure building up. Instead of turning all the way to the other side, what I want you to do is very slowly, so it's not a quick thing, it's very slowly roll over to maybe your back. So if you started with one side, roll to your back. If you started in a different position, then roll to whatever position you want to roll to. But it's not a quick thing. Do it pretty slowly. Because again, instead of doing it quick, which is a quick release, when you do it slowly, it becomes more relaxing. So when you do that slowly, what tends to happen is the, the, the tension doesn't go jump back up too quickly when you are in a new position. It, everything slows down a little bit. 
And then again, if you feel the tension going up, the first thing you would do is see if you can figure it out where, where it's in your body, place the hand or soothe again. So my suggestion, and this works really well for clients, is don't move first, soothe first. And if the thing, if the intensity goes high again, then you end up moving, but move slowly. Now, what happens is when you slow everything down, number one, you're not going to toss and turn so many times because you're actually creating relaxation even through the movement and the position change. You're creating that slowing down part, which means what I found with clients is they don't end up tossing and turning so many times because every time they quickly toss and turn, it jumps the tension back up. And when you slow it down, actually what happens is often you create higher relaxation and that can help you to actually fall asleep in a shorter period of time. But at this moment in time, we're not putting pressure on how quickly you should be falling asleep. It starts with the practice of slowing the tossing and turning down so that you can create more relaxation rather than allow the tension to go back up. So this, I know that this takes effort because when you're a bit maybe even frustrated, it's like, yeah, who wants to go and move slowly? But you've got to change the behavior there. So you want to move slower so that actually you're enabling the body to create higher amounts of relaxation. If any one of you also has this when you're not able to fall asleep, that can also apply in that place. So the first part of your evening, instead of really sort of almost with anger, moving and tossing and turning and frustration, slow it down and use these things to actually create a higher physical relaxation. This isn't a quick, for, quick fix for everything, but it's to enable a higher amount of relaxation really. And then we can build from there. So first step is just slow it down. Now that you've watched my answer to this question about tossing and turning, it's over to you. Hit that little like button below uh, if you liked what I shared with you today. Hit that subscribe button below and that little bell as well if you're interested in hearing more about what I share with clients and the way I work and how I help people to actually overcome their long-term insomnia and sleep problems. This is what this entire YouTube channel is about. And obviously come over to the comment box and feel free to ask me a question or share what your experience is with this particular thing that I talked about. And obviously if you put this in place that I suggested in the video, make sure you do it not just as a one-off, but put it in place for a period of time so that you can really see how learning this skill of calming yourself can actually benefit you. None of the things that I suggest is ever quick fixes. They don't work and often what they do is actually they cause more frustration for a lot of people. And again, I see this every single day in my practice. So think of sleep improvements and overcoming your sleep problems and insomnia in a step-by-step -step and practical way. That's going to take time and it's going to take effort, but it is completely possible. So I hope that this video has benefited you. And once again, thank you so much for being part of my community and I will see you in the next video.